my PAX 2016, PAX West that is, recap. So this year, because I feel like it takes away from the experience, it totally detracts from the experience that I have to lug around a gigantic camera or have Jay film me the whole time, I decided to do it vlog style, just with my phone, just take video of me walking around and things that I see that I really enjoy. But first, okay, so I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit tipsy. I saw that, what? Fucking computer, what? Razor Synapse, fuck you! So I saw that like, I had, I had drinking, I had drank a full bottle of, um, fucking what is it? Red wine for my last drunk stream. And I I had that much left of the fucking bottle and I'm like, why don't I just drink it? I'm doing a video on my vlog channel about a sex experience today, so why not just have more fun with it? And I drank it really, really fast. I didn't even finish it, but now I'm feeling a little bit tipsy, so I'm sorry about that. Maybe that'll make this experience a little bit more interesting. Also, I still have the Planeswalker fake tattoo on my chest because I haven't showered today. Anyway, so my favorite parts of PAX are always getting to see the really cool displays, getting to try out games that I want to come out hands-on when you don't normally get that kind of kind of demo, stuff like that. But my favorite part is always the collectibles, the collectibles that I can get. I actually spent like $400 this time and I'll show you at the end of the video all of the stuff that I got, all of the goodies and the things that I bought. But first I wanna show the footage and talk about my highlights. So one of the things I love about PAX is the fact that they have such a strong Magic the Gathering presence. And I'm talking about PAX Primes, AKA PAX West. I don't know if they do it other places. Wizards of the Coast is here, their headquarters is here. So it's probably easier for them to do stuff here. But last year they had like the cool Ulamog fucking set up with all of the dudes and shit coming out of the walls and like oh it was a really cool display. This year they had this cool like exhibit on the street for the new set coming out with all of the Chandra style stuff and you got to build your own Thopters which was really fun. I got a bunch of packs. I got the tattoo. I bought a ton of fucking shirts for Jay and for myself like sweaters and stuff for magic. I'm a blue mana person. He's a black mana person. It was really cute. We bought a bunch of stuff. Got to watch some of Worlds. Not a lot of it. And I didn't even play any magic because a lot of it is limited and uh, I don't really play limited that much. If they had like constructed winner boxes, I would be all over that fucking shit, but they didn't. Another thing that was really cool was the Dishonored display. They had like a house that you could walk through and see a bunch of stuff and they had the, the clear LED screens that like told you about the different memorabilia and artifacts. Unfortunately, it's first person, so I'm not really interested in that game, but the display was really cool. One thing I regret and a lot of things that I regret is I had barely any time. I woke up late both of the days that I went and today I didn't even go because I woke up at like 2 p.m. and I really wanted to try some VR things and NVIDIA had a VR system. There were some indie VR games that I wanted to try that I didn't get to try. I literally didn't get to play many things because the lines are always so long and that's something I kind of hate about conventions. It's so much nicer to just like watch a convention than it is to go to one but then there are so many redeeming factors about going to the convention and socializing and seeing all the things first person. Guys, I'm a content creator. Did it work? I don't think it did. But either way, I just don't feel like I have enough time to wait in line for all of the games that I want to play so I have to micromanage myself and think like, okay, I need to go to this place at this time, this place at that time, and it can get really overwhelming. Like, it, it's fun, but it's also overwhelming, you know what I'm saying? So I wish I have got to play more games and demo more games. I feel like I only played like two games, literally. One of them was that one, it's like a, an homage to like Tokyo Ghoul, but I don't know. So best parts about PAX, magic, the displays, getting to see the games. There was some Final Fantasy stuff that I was really excited about for 15. And my biggest regret is that I didn't get to play as many games or do as many appointments as I wanted to. Anyway, I'm gonna stop blabbering. Just watch some of the footage from me at the event. Hey guys, I just arrived at PAX, I got my content creator badge. It's different than media this year, but anyway, welcome to my unofficial PAX 2016 super lazy as fuck vlog where I show you things that you guys want to see. Enjoy. Jay, what are you wearing today? Pixels. He needs this to remember the people. We have made it. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy my iPhone fucking camera footage quality. I'm waiting for Jay to do something, but this screen behind me is interesting. Ooh! Space Invaders. Final Fantasy stuff. Oh yeah. Oh my god, should we do it? So we ride the giant dinosaur to my death. Hello. I am inside the Twitch Partner Lounge, kind of. Just wanted to say hi. Also behind me is the Twitch booth. Pretty cool, I guess.
Look, they've, they've skipped the middleman. Now there's just Japanese the game. Japanese the game. <laughs> Do we like, does it slide down and we die no, or what? it just locks. It just locks? Yeah, okay. So we'd have to walk? Yeah. Which That's is not bad. Which is almost worse than sliding down. <laughs> no. For the truly lazy. So lazy. Oh. These escalators take hours, don't they? Don't they? Oh, yeah, definitely. Fucking forever. Oh my god. It's been four years. I'm now too old for this convention. Okay, we're going to the magic thing right now. We're gonna see what's going on. Uh, they have worlds going on and I think it ended for the day today. I'm not sure, but I know that they have drafts and stuff. I brought draft sleeves, but I don't really feel like doing any limited, so I don't know. What? They have two headed giant and the draft. Oh shit, like how often? So, Whenever they get enough people? or? Uh, drafts are on demand, two headed giants are at 8. What time is it now? Not 8, right? I don't know, we'll see. are random packs. Random packs? They give you an internal master's pack and then two random standard legal packs. Oh wow. Yeah. That's alright. Standard legal though, I thought you were telling me that I could get like first alpha. Zendikar or something, or Alpha. Alpha! alpha. Oh, man. No Can way. Imagine getting alpha? No, like, I can't. I've got an Alpha pack. Uh, I'm just gonna drop and keep this pack. <laughs> right? This sweater. It's pretty cute. I'm trying to see what I look like in it. It's like a. It's a men's though, but it's uh, small, so they said it'll shrink. I don't know. It's comfy. Oh yeah. All right, we're inside the Kaldesh harem area. It actually looks like a harem that would have like a hook on the table, but that's like not okay. Can you see? Yeah. Um, it's for the the new expansion coming out for Magic, and it's like a street fair supposedly. If you can see that way, there's like a bunch of them kind of interesting. What's up guys, we've arrived at Ad Pax the second day, which for me is like, well it's the second day for me, but it's the last day for the convention because there's like four actual days and we only went to Saturday and Sunday. But uh, today I have a bunch of things, I'm like focused. I want to go make a thopter at the Magic Place. I need to go get Destiny codes for Obi and Nick. Um, I want to play like certain games that I didn't get to play yesterday. And I want to go buy a bunch of hats. I'm going to be a hat person because of how many cool fucking hats there were. And apparently the escalator's broken so we have to walk like it's stairs.
I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go make one. Yeah. Let's go make a pop. So this is how you do it. This is what I got. These are the wings, for sure. So you have to crack all these out. What do you, you mean? Can, yeah, you can do like anything. Oh. You can make your, like, it's like a customization thing. All right, I'm gonna make the best Kildesh <laughs> Thopta. This is what I'm doing so far. I think I'm done. All right, this is what mine looks like. It's not great, but it's mine. Yeah, this is Jay's. Cool, right? All right. So we got uh, some fucking booster packs and shit for giving away our thopters uh, that are gonna be like flown somewhere off a tall building or something. And I figured I'm gonna break it if I try to put it in my backpack anyway, so I might as well make it have a purpose. But yeah, that was like really fun. And I got another one too. Just show, just show, yeah. I got another one too so I can make one at home or on stream or something. All right, let's go do something else. Let's go get tattoos. Airbrush magic tattoo that looks pretty cool. I'll show you guys the process. I guess I'm gonna make Jay record it because he doesn't want to get one. Ugh, so boring, right? Am I right? I'm totally right. Also behind me here, there's like little poster things for the Magic World Championship with all their faces on it. It's pretty cute. enjoyed that portion of this video now I'm gonna be showing you the things that I bought and things that I got for free and all the swag that I got this weekend did one of my eyelashes just fall off what the fuck was that and once again tipsy so I'm sorry one of the first things I bought is this entire Undertale little buddies series one they're like collectible little figurines of like the main people from Undertale the the protagonist Sans Papyrus Toriel everyone so fucking cute there's one of the wolves as well the wolf brother whatever the fucks and this cost me 70 bucks but it's totally worth it because I love collectibles and I fucking love Undertale I'm playing Undertale currently on this channel as you guys know and I just love the game I love in games that are like cool and take on like a new approach to older genres. I'm gonna be unboxing these, that's why I'm not showing them to you right now on this channel later, but I just wanted to show you guys as something that I bought at PAX. That was expensive as fuck. The next thing that I did was I bought a bunch of things from Bungie. 
so that I could get these codes for Destiny from my friends. There's like an emblem there that you can't get anywhere else, which is really cool if you play Destiny, which I don't, but I decided to buy a plushy ghost and a shirt for Jay just so I could get the codes for my friends who do play fucking Destiny. I, I like the ghost. He's really cute. I would play Destiny, but it's first person and that's just, you know, first person's not my thing, but the ghost is really, really cute. And you know, even though it's not a game that I play and love very much, I think he's very cute and I will be keeping him here. He reminds me of like a fucked up companion cube or something. Any plushie is welcome in my house. So welcome to the plushie corner, Mr. Ghosty. All right, so here's the Destiny shirt that I bought, Jay. It's really cool. It, it just looks awesome. Jay doesn't play Destiny either, but he'll wear it and look like a badass either way. It doesn't matter. You guys are welcome. 3X Gaming and Nicholas L. Stotch, amazing supporters of my content and contributors, contributors to my Shit Terra Says videos. Thank you so much. You guys are getting codes from Bungie for Destiny for them emblems that you can only get if you went to PAX. So I got this thing. Um, it's uh, Elder Scrolls Legend free download and free card packs, which is cool. I'm probably going to use this for myself because Elder Scrolls Legends seems cool. I didn't get a lot of freebies this year. I mostly just spent a lot of money. There's a random bag. There's a random bag. The next thing that I bought is this Toriel plushie. Oh my god, she's so fucking cute. Look at her. I'm so happy that I bought this. I saw this on the stand and I was like, yes, I absolutely have to have this. And then I saw the collectibles that I just showed you, these ones, and I'm like, I have to have these two. And all together, it cost me like over 100 bucks. I think she was like 30 bucks or something. When you buy things at conventions, they get like really expensive, but totally worth it. I killed her in my playthrough on accident. I didn't know at the time how things worked where you could be passive. And I feel like this is something I had to do. I had to buy her and cuddle her to make her feel better that I fucking killed her because she's basically my surrogate mother. You know what I'm saying? And I killed her. The next thing that I bought was like five hats because I've decided that occasionally I'm going to be a fucking hat person. So I bought this Team Rocket hat, this epic Harley Quinn hat that is like faux leather and really cool. It was like 25 bucks. This Assassin's Creed hat. I liked it because it was white and red and I like white and red. Hopefully I don't get too much makeup on it. This Pokemon hat just because it has so many of the original Pokemon on it. I just fucking love it. I think it's adorable. And lastly, this Mortal Kombat hat, because Mortal Kombat is my favorite fighting franchise. Uh, really, really close first to Tekken, which was my childhood favorite fighting game. One hat that I was really pissed off I didn't get, there was this amazing Streets of Rage hat that said like Streets of Rage here like this with the logo, and then on the bill it had like a scene from the game or like the, the, the cover art for the game. It looked so fucking amazing. I went there the second day to buy all of my stuff and I ended up not being able to get it because it was sold out and I was really pissed off. I was thinking that all of the like Sonic and Mario shit would go first, but apparently the Streets of Rage hat was so cool that it doesn't matter how not as iconic it was, it's still fucking sold out. Damn it. But I can buy it online. I actually added it to my wish list, so we should be good. The next thing that I bought is a bunch of belts. So I don't have any belts and I'm often fluctuating in weight. Right now I'm trying to lose weight and I have been losing a lot of weight. So a lot of my like high-waisted pants that I want to wear, they don't fucking stay up. So I bought a tails belt. Got a little fucking so cute, the best. I bought a Magic the Gathering blue mana belt because blue mana is my fucking favorite. I am a blue mage. And then I bought a Mortal Kombat belt that says fatality. And there's like actually pictures of fatalities and stuff going on here, which is like amazing. If you look really close. At first I thought it was just like redness in the background or like blood or something, but you actually have like fucking Liu Kang and like Sub-Zero and shit. I love this belt a lot. And then the last belt I got is the Team Rocket belt. Uh, as you guys know, one of my first crushes on non-real characters is James from Team Rocket. I love Team Rocket. I always root for the bad guys and like literally everything and Meowth and Jesse and everything and I've always wanted to cosplay as Jesse and I just, I fucking love this belt. It's so much better than getting like a standard Pokemon belt. Another thing that I got is you get this guy. I don't know what the fuck he is. Um, he's like a destiny something. They told me what it was when they gave it to me. Warlock Stormcaller. That's what he is. Uh, I got this for free because I spent more than 50 bucks at the Bungie store for all the destiny stuff to get the codes and I think he's really cute. I think I'm gonna keep him just because, you know, little figures. I love figures. I love collectibles. Here, uh, is this. This is what I was talking about that it's like a game that is like an homage to Catherine. Uh, dive into the dream world 18.gamezomba.com and there's like a code on the back, which I'm not going to show you because it's a code. And that's also a bookmark. It's really cool. I got the 18, the summon tickets. We got two codes for the Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, which is Koo, and the Mobius Final Fantasy code on the back of this as well. We got two starter packs for Kaladesh, which are like kind of useless, but they do have cards in them. This is more for new gamers because you can actually play these decks. They're like clash 
Flash decks or whatever. And that's cool, but the cooler thing is the fact that we got two Eldritch Moon packs just for making a Thopter and then sending it into them so they could throw all of the Thopters off the top of the convention. I gave my Thopter to them. I wanted to keep it, but you can't keep the Thopter together because it's just like those little indent places and you can't keep it together if you just throw it in a bag. So I decided to give it to them. And here is one of the games that I actually demoed, Tokyo Ghoul Dark War. And this is like a cool little Tokyo Ghoul mobile game that I played made by Game Samba. Brandon, you can't you can't watch anymore because I got you a present and I don't want you to see it in the video. Uh, I doubt you watch my gaming videos, but yeah, I don't know if you guys know who he is. He's a mod. He's also one of my friends who plays Magic with me. Um, but other than something that I got him, I got two more of my like giant pink sparkly dice. These are the dice that I use when I'm actually playing Magic the Gathering. They're kind of oversized. I also have smaller ones, but last year they only carried two and this year they only carried two, but last year I wanted four, so now I got the other two to complete the set of four, which is cool. I also got some like really fucking amazing, like oh my god amazing. I got these, I think for Brandon, and it says don't touch my dice on the one side. So like when someone picks up your dice to roll because you know you guys just like share dice usually it's like oh high roll and then he takes it and he's like high roll it's funny that it says don't touch my dice and then for Brandon I got two rips RIP it's like a picture of RIP because if you roll a one that fucking sucks and these are also for Brandon and he says rip a lot so that's why we got it for him and I got him like the girliest colors possible and then I got two sets of these because I couldn't not I saw them and I literally almost fucking died oh my god it hit me right in the childhood and I was so fucking excited you guys can't see them. I'll post a picture of them. It's Ministry of Silly Walks and it's like John Cleese is like, like, well, and I fucking love it. Oh my god, I found a pink one too. So good. I got like a matching set. These are the only ones they had that actually matched and then I got like a purple one and a pink one. So fucking good. Oh my god. I was so hyped. I had to get like a bunch of those dice because oh my fucking god, they're so good. Ah. I love the Chessex fucking booth. I love dice. I, I'm a huge collector of dice. I have so many and oh my god, so good. Let's move over to day one's bag. Now everyone loved the exploding, exploding kittens. I can't fucking talk. Tipsy bag. And they thought it was like a real tote, but this is just like something that I got from the convention for uh, spending money on this sweater. This is like a an ugly Christmas sweater with like fucking stormtroopers on it and I really loved it. And even though it's a men's sweater, I got a size small and I'm hoping that it shrinks a little bit, but I fucking love this sweater. It's so comfy and I decided to wear it in this fucking video because why not? So we've got the PAX West 2016 in Seattle, Washington guide. This has like all of the stuff that's going on during PAX and stuff. That's the shit that you can just get for free. Someone randomly gave me like a comic of Betsy Ross, I think because they thought, you know, I'm a female, so I'm probably gonna be like a feminist or something. I don't know. And then I bought some magic stuff. Now this shirt is so cute and I'm probably gonna cut it into something like sexier because it is a men's small, but I fucking think it's so adorable. It is a like one of those like baseball shirts or whatever, but it's got the blue mana symbol and I'm thinking about cutting it short so it's like a belly shirt then wearing like high-rise jeans and wearing my uh, blue mana symbol belt and I think that would be like such a cute outfit. I fucking love blue mana. My favorite deck ever was mono blue devotion in the like Theros block, but I know that's not like the regular way that you play blue. Like that's like an aggro creatures deck and usually you play blue with like spells and counter spells and shit like that. But I also like Esper control around that time frame in the Theros block and I just love blue. I like blue. I don't know what to tell you. Jace fucking yeah, suck my dick, bitches. So I got this, and then I also got a sweater. Let me go find it. All right, so this is my sweater. It's got the uh, blue mana symbol here, and then on the pocket down here, it's got the planeswalker symbol. And the funny thing was, like, they weren't carrying any size small sweaters, so I was, like, really dejected and disheartened when I saw that it was, like, medium, large, extra large, 2XL, and I'm like, no, why? I hate fucking baggy sweaters like this with, like, zip up, and they're, like, the standard sweaters. I feel like I just look so fat and weird and bulbous in them, and it's not comfortable. And and then I noticed that there's a mannequin sitting there and I checked the fucking tag of the mannequin and the mannequin has the only size small fucking sweater in the entire place and so I go up and I ask if I can buy it and he's like oh yeah I'm a fucking capitalist pig I'll sell you fucking anything it was hilarious and wonderful and they just took it off the poor mannequin and gave it to me and it's the only size small that exists I love it I wore it out to Pokewalk today I think it's so comfortable and amazing and thank you guys who worked for Wizards of the Coast this weekend for selling it to me I really appreciate that the mannequin went sweaterless for the rest of the weekend and it was all because of me. Jay also got the same shirt and the same sweater combo but in the black mana symbol with the, like this, you know, the skull and shit like that. And he looks so good in it. It's so good. And this morning he was eating a sandwich and he got like a fucking stain on the white part. So I'm gonna have to be scrubbing that with bleach later. But anyway, that's pretty much everything that I got. I feel I feel like there were a few like free things that I didn't add in here, but I don't really care about the free stuff. I end up like just using the codes that I'm interested in and the rest of the free stuff I just discard or like I try to recycle 
little and so I ended up not taking things that I wasn't interested in because I feel like it's just a waste of space and I end up throwing it away anyway so I hope you guys enjoyed this video that was my experience of PAX I know it was a little bit more chill than usual usually I make a more I guess I would say professional video not that this video was too unprofessional just you know I didn't even use my professional camera I just used my phone hopefully it was a more intimate experience than you guys enjoyed and this actually might be my last like PAX West ever because I am moving next year before the next PAX so I really enjoyed it and I wish I had gone today because then I maybe get to do some VR stuff since today is a Monday when you guys are watching it'll be a Tuesday I think but still I don't think a lot of people go to the convention when a lot of people have to work on Monday and I heard a lot of people like including my friend DJ Sparta who hung out with me all Saturday he's fucking amazing thank you so much DJ Sparta for putting up with me all day I know it was a little frantic running around everywhere but uh, I know he flew home before the Monday day so I think it would have been fun to go with not that many people there anyway like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed tell me what your favorite part of PAX Prime slash West PAX West I can't get used to saying that 2016 was and what games you are interested in and how jealous you are of those destiny emblems that I got for some of my viewers <laughs> sorry guys I couldn't get more than like two without standing in line for an hour doing a demo and then making Jay do that as well I could have gotten maybe four if I invested more time into it but didn't get any for a giveaway love you guys and I'll see you in tomorrow's video Mwah.